Now for this next example, we have a baseball that's hit at height 1 meter at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal with initial speed 25 meters per second. Find and compare the range of the ball to the distance traveled by the ball. Okay, so it's hit at a height of 1 meter. So I'm going to put a little 1 right here. It's not going to be to scale. Let's put it that way. All right, so it's hit at an angle of 30 degrees to the horizontal. So we have an angle right here that's 30 degrees to the horizontal. And then, of course, the ball follows a path. So it follows that vector up, and it goes up in the air, and then it lands. So they want us to compare the range of the ball to the distance traveled. Now, the range of the ball is right here along the x-axis from where it's hit to where it lands. That would be the range. It's an x value. Now the distance traveled would be from when it's hit up in the air and where it lands. That's the distance traveled. And so in order to compare them, of course, we're going to have to find both of them. And to do that, we're going to have to first come up with a whole bunch of things about this. So let's start with initial position. The initial position, I'll put it over here. So um, let me just say that this is all set up over here. Um, and so is the graph, honestly. I'm just trying to set up the whole problem, which is, of course, where all the real work is in a lot of problems like these. Okay, the initial position would be x0, y0, which is 0, 1. The initial velocity is along this vector, right? So the initial velocity, which is u0, v0, is equal to, well, it's hit with an initial speed of 25, so that would make it 25 cosine of 30 degrees, because 30 degrees was our angle, and then 25 sine of 30 degrees. Which is, of course, 25 times the square root of 3 over 2, and 25 over 2. My 3 got really tiny there, so let me make that just a little bit bigger. Square root of 3. There we go. Okay, so we've got our initial velocity. We have our initial position, so we can use those to create our um, position function. So the position function, I'll just start over here. Position vector valued function would be r of t is equal to... I'm just going to remind us all of the formula that we learned for this. It's u0 t plus x0 and then negative 1 half g t squared plus v0 t plus y0. Um, that's the projection projectile motion formula. We, we learned this before. In a previous section. Okay, well, I have my u0, I have my x0, I have my v0 and my y0, I have everything. And gravity, of course, is a constant. And since we're working in meters per second in this particular one, that's 9.8. So that means that I have u0, which is uh, 25 square root of 3 over 2 times t plus nothing, plus 0, right? Because our x0 is 0, Oops, although that looks weird. There we go, that's a zero. And then negative a half g, but g is 9.8, so that's negative 4.9 t squared plus v0, which is 25 over 2, t plus 1, because 1 is our initial height. I'll just make a little note. That's 9.8, right, right there. Okay, so if that's our position function, this is r of t, then our derivative of that would be our prime of t, which of course we're going to need for the arc length formula that we all know is coming. So it's 25 square root of 3 over 2, negative 9.8t plus 25 over 2. And of course the derivative of 1 is 0, so we don't care about that. 
Now, to know the range and the distance traveled, I'm going to need to know the time at impact. So I'm going to need to know the time of the flight, because then I'll be able to find the other two. If you look at this, this is based on t, time. So I'm going to need to know a t value, right, the time of the flight. OK, well, when it impacts, the y value will be 0. At impact, your position function for the y direction should be equal to 0. And we'll solve, if I can write the word solve, solve for t. All right, so if I look at my um, lovely position function, I will take the y value, which is negative 4.9t squared plus 25 over 2t plus 1. I'm going to set it equal to 0. And that's a quadratic, and we are not in Algebra 1 uh, when you learn the quadratic formula. So we are going to use maple. Yes, we are. So let me pull maple up. So right here, I said, solve that equation for me. And it comes up with answers that you can't read because they're too small. So let me make that a little bit bigger. The negative one obviously makes no sense because you can't go back in time before you hit the baseball. So it's the 2.62. Um, so you'll make a little note that you're solving it with maple. And you'll get the t is 2.629, eh, 2.63 seconds. Let's make it that. And I just denote that I use maple to do the algebra work for me. Now I needed that time value so that I can find the things that I'm looking for. In particular, I want the range of the flight. Now remember, for projectile motion, range does not mean um, what it did in algebra class when they would talk about the domain and range. This is talking about the x distance that um, so the x distance that the ball travels. in 2.63 seconds, right? So using the value we just found above, although it looks like 263, sorry. 2.63. I'm not sure that's better, but there you have it. OK, so if I take my x distance, so I look at my position function. Um, so if I look at the x distance, what I mean by that is the rx of 2.63. Right? That's what we're looking for. So I guess I don't know why I wrote that that small. Hold on. <laughs> so what that means is the r x of 2.63, which would be 2 or 25 square root of 3 over 2, because I'm using my position function right here. 25 square root of 3 over 2 times t, so times 2.63. And this is what we have maple for to do things like this. So, oh, actually, it looks like I didn't do it. I didn't bother. I just put it in um, to a computer. So, oh, there it is. Here it is. So, find that R1. So, I had it find the position function right there. I named it R1 right there. And then I had it evaluate that R1 at 2.63. And, you know, I put it in more decimal places. And it tells me that it's 56. Point, it's right here. It's the x component right there. The y component is irrelevant. You can see that's very close to zero exactly because it's hitting. So it's the x component we care about. So it's 56.912 meters. And of course, as always, we will indicate, although this one, honestly, I don't think we need to, um, but technically you're using maple to do that, but it's you could also use a calculator rather easily. OK, so the horizontal distance that's traveling is 56.912 meters. Distance. There we go. Good grief. All right, now what about the total distance traveled in terms of arc length? Well, that would be the arc length, which is L, which is the integral from A to B of the derivative on the magnitude of the derivative with respect to time. Okay, so L is equal to, 
All right, now what about our limits of integration? Well, we already figured out that it goes from zero when you hit the ball to 2.63 seconds. All right, there's our time frames. And we know that it's magnitude, so we're going to take a big square root. And then we already found the derivative right here, the derivative of the position vector. So it'll be our position function. So it's 25 squared of 3 over 2 squared plus uh, negative 9.8t plus 25 over 2. So negative 9.8t plus 25 over 2 squared. Here, hold on. This is squared plus this is squared. You close off your square root. And we are so not doing that by hand. Oh, no, 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 no. This is what computers were invented for. So I tell it to take the integral, int, of the square root of 25 square root of 3 over 2 squared plus negative 9.8t plus 12.5 squared. Um, with respect to t is from 0 to 2.62, yada, yada, yada. And it tells me right there, but it's really small print, that, that it's 60.118. So that is what I will tell it. That is what maple is for. We are not doing stuff like that by hand. And of course, we'll put a little squiggly in there just to remind ourselves that um, they're not the same thing. So the horizontal distance traveled is 60.912. And, or 56.912, and then the total distance traveled is 60.152 meters. So note this is longer, of course, than the horizontal distance traveled because it has to arch through the air 